Budia. Uh, I come from Indonesia, so you have to pardon my English if some, sometimes I speak in uh, Bahasa. Um, today, uh, I'm going to uh, share about uh, how we can use the Azure Cognitive Services in our own mobile applications. Okay. Um, I work for a company uh, called Radia Labs. Uh, it's in uh, Bandung City, uh, two hours from Jakarta. So we are not in our capital city in Indonesia. But most of our clients uh, start thinking about um, how mobile application not only use for data entry, but also for um, uh, integrate some kind of artificial intelligence in their mon in their own mobile application. Okay, um, uh, this is my teams. Uh, we are only a small company. Yes, there are also female developers in our company, not only males. Uh, it's very important. Okay, before I am uh, start. Uh, my talks, uh, I have a video for you. Uh, I always use video when I'm talking in English to save my time. <laughs> okay, um, is anyone here have uh, watched TV series called Silicon Valley? Anyone? Yeah? Okay. Uh, if you are not watching the series, uh, so Silicon Valley is a, t a TV series from HBO that uh, show us how a startup called Pied, Pied Piper developed their own idea, got investment, etc. It's just a comedy, actually. Okay, so this is one scene from uh, the Silicon Valley that show you uh, how uh, a people build a mobile app that use some kind of artificial intelligence. Can you see? Okay, why is it in slow motion? <laughs> and no, no sounds. Okay, uh, uh, because I don't know the setup, I can just explain you uh, what happened here. So this is Jin Yang. Jin Yang developed an application called Seafood. An application can see the food. <laughs> yeah, uh, And he tried to uh, showcase the application to the investors. The first one, the application can see whether it's a hot dog or not. Okay, so uh, he tried to demo the application. Okay, it can detect it's a hot dog. Okay, the investors are happy. Yeah, and then he tried to demo uh, another food the, uh, to test whether the application can actually see. Yeah. Yeah, they're happy or they laugh. Yeah, yeah, they could bring us the million dollars. <coughs> okay. Can I forward it? No, no, no. It, it can save my time. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the second one, he will try to photos uh, spaghetti or pizza, I think. Okay. Try pizza. Okay. Okay. He, he tried again. And the application call, the result is with not hot dog. <laughs> okay? So the application works. It can detect whether it's hot dog or it's not hot dog. Okay? The problem is they can detect other foods. Okay? They just identify that the other foods are not hot dogs. Okay? But what we what we see here is the Jin Yang has developed an epi, a mobile applications that use some kind of artificial intelligence in the applications, and after the presentations, the investor are not happy because the application is can't see food, right? It just can see hot dogs are not hot dogs, okay? And Jin Yang said that if we have to uh, see uh, if the application need to see the other foods, he would. He have to train the classifiers, the the the, the artificial the, the engine, with the other foods pictures. Okay, so we li we have to list the other uh, the other pictures and we have to the la uh, label the, the the picture, right? But it it took us a lot of times. But eventually, unfortunately, Jin Yang has another idea. Okay, so 
he approached by a company called Periscope, this actual company, right? So, uh, the Periscope uh, has an actual problem with the content from its users because the Periscope is a user generated content of kind of applications. People can upload uh, any pictures, right, or any videos. So, uh, and the algorithm that built by Jin Yang uh, can perfectly uh, determine whether its picture is contain some stuff like hot dog <laughs> and not hot dog. Okay, it is very important for the periscope because many people try to upload uh, adult content in their platform. See, so even though the seafood cannot determine the other food, the periscope found that this algorithm can perfectly determine whether it's content hot dog and not hot dog. And then he sold the application to Periscope. And that's the story about Jin Yang. <laughs> and as you know, uh, Microsoft said uh, many times that currently we are entering the artificial intelligence era, right? In, uh, since 2015, not because the AI is the only new technology, but currently we can access the AI technology easily than before. Okay, so the AI itself is started in 1960, but only uh, a small people that can access the technology because it's in a research or something like that. But for us as a developers, since 2014, 15, etc., we can start developing applications and integrate the applications that use some kind of artificial intelligence technology. So the problem is when we would like to develop application to recognize a hot dog. Um, uh, I try to remember my computer science class in uh, university. The first one, you have to do some kind of image manip manipulation first. Yeah? You have to define the features, what kind of the features of the image that you want to bring as an identifier, whether it's a hot dog or not. Yeah? And then you have to do some image processing. You have to sharpen the image. You have to get the features, the image pictures from the image. right? And the second one, you have to build the vision engines that actually to determine whether it's a hot dog or not. You have to pre-process your data. You need a lot of data from the pictures. Jin Yang scrapped the entire internet uh, from the Google image and Bing image. And we have to uh, do it by ourselves if we want to build uh, the engine. And then we have to train the data. We can use uh, any artificial intelligence algorithm that you want to have. There are plenty of it. And the third one, you have to build an API. If you, have, if you want to build the mobile applications, the engine itself is, uh, we, need to inter uh, we need to expose the functionality from the engine so the applications can access the, uh, the functionality. Yeah? So we have to build an interface from the engine to the uh, REST API that readily consumed by the mobile applications. And the, to uh, and the last one, you use it in, our, in your own app, okay? In your mobile app or in your web apps. And the saddest thing is we only want to do this, yeah? For some reasons, for some of you, maybe just a small people would like to build by your own, okay? But the most of developers need to be more productive. As you know, that Xamarin is uh, Xamarin Vision, Microvision, uh, to, to make more developers to be more productive. We only care about, it, about this, right? So the question is, do we need to do that kind of stuff from the beginning while we only want to build our own our mobile apps? That's uh, uh, the, uh, the question that Microsoft would like to answer with Microsoft Cognitive Services, okay? So uh, Cognitive Services is a collection of services that provide Microsoft, uh, that provided by Microsoft to empower developers to edit, add some kind of artificial intelligence into our own mobile apps. There are five categories that uh, the intelligence can we integrate with our apps. The first one is vision. Yeah, so we can build an application that can actually see not only hot dog and the hot dog, but you, you can train the system to see the, uh, the data that you have. Yeah. You can also use the Vision API to detect emotion. Uh, so you can take picture of, of persons. 
maybe your wife, and then you can detect whether uh, she is happy or not with you. Okay. Um, the second one is speech. So uh, Microsoft provide the speech uh, API, so we can uh, use text to speech, speech to text, uh, and uh, translating. Okay. Uh, the third one is language. Uh, this language engine we can use to build application that would like to uh, process natural language. So we don't have to build our own natural language processing to determine an intent. We can use uh, this uh, language services from Microsoft. The third one is knowledge. So it can, uh, uh, we, we, they have like recognizer for entity, they have recognizer for label, uh, for, for some kind of stuff. And we can use this, uh, the algorithm to build our uh, knowledge based system. Okay, and the last one is the search. Uh, search is not really uh, a new one actually. This is uh, abstraction of the current uh, Bing API. So this is the Microsoft Cognitive Services. It provides you with five kind of categories. And if you see, this is like uh, some kind uh, artificial intelligence that human can do right now. And then you can do it in your mobile apps. So. What kind of apps that powered by Microsoft um, Cognitive Services? They actually build some kind of demos with this uh, with those APIs. <coughs> the first one is CaptionBot.ai. You can use it by yourself. You upload a picture, and it can uh, give you a caption automatically. So if you upload these pictures in the CaptionBot.ai, it's it will shows you. I think it's a person sitting in front of a computer, and he seems happy. I'm 99 sure that's Bill Gates. Um, the Vision API have uh, uh, can detect um, popular uh, figures in the world. So if you upload uh, your photos, it will it won't be uh, show your name, uh, but it can uh, show uh, a male can uh, see it in the a table or a man uh, sitting in front of a computer. Okay, but uh, the algorithm it works. The second one. Is the celebs like not me? You can upload yourself and find which celebrity that's uh, quite similar with your face. They demo the Steve Ballmer, and the application says, "Yeah, yeah, it matches the Anthony Hopkins." What do you think? <laughs> um, ah, I forget what does this application does. Okay, and the uh, Microsoft Cognitive Services is not only used by the Microsoft by themselves, but also they offered the services to other company. Um, you know Uber, uh, Uber used the Face API, yeah, the Face API to randomly check whether the driver on the car is actually the driver registered to the systems. Okay, so they built like uh, face recognition uh, mobile attendance in the applications and randomly check uh, whether uh, it, it's because they need that to comply with their regulations. Okay, the registered driver is actually drive the car. <coughs> and of course, you can build this kind uh, this kind of system by your by your own self. But I don't know; it will take how how long, right? Maybe uh, a month or a year. I don't know. And the two, uh, the other examples, um, a, a company called uh, Mio. Uh, use the recommendation API. Uh, basically, it it will learn from the history of the data that uh, comes from the customers. Yeah, the browsing uh, the customer browse the applications and they uh, save the data. Uh, Microsoft have uh, the recommendation API. It's like kind basket like algorithm that can uh, recommend what other TV movie series or other product that you would like to buy from their systems, okay? Now, um, why you, you use Microsoft Cognitive Services? Why you can't be by your own self? Uh, of course, the first one is the simplicity, yeah? Uh, they have all provide the necessity race API, and for some um, popular uh, mobile platform, they provided it uh, with mobile SDK, so you don't need to, uh, uh, build the actual API call to the systems and it's flexible because uh, you can use by uh, any technology you can use it from your uh, Android iOS uh, Windows 
uh, and also you can use with any other language that you prefer uh, because it's actually the REST API, yeah? the SDK only um, uh, make it easy to call the actual API. But you can always use the REST API from your uh, language and your preferred platform. And the third one is tested and well documented. Uh, uh, it's important because as a new platform, we need to learn it by our own self. Uh, so uh, they they provide many samples in GitHub uh, and many um, uh, the documentation is uh, amazing uh, and you can use uh, the source code to to build your own app and start from there and extend uh, new features when you need. Okay, uh, this is the the the, hook, the complete uh, the the services they provide by Microsoft Cognitive Services. From the vision, they have uh, computer visions, uh, emotions face and video video API okay and uh, in speech uh, they have uh, speech to text translations speaker recognitions and custom recognitions so you actually can build uh, your own database with uh, custom recognitions <coughs> yeah uh, same thing with the vision they have announced a custom vision API it's already in preview mode you can upload your own images to um, to train the algorithms and uh, language about text analytics linguistic analytics being spell checked not really interesting knowledge uh, recommendation API this is the the most important uh, API in that category and the search from uh, the Bing teams uh, actually this is not new you can use it uh, not use the cognitive but they're on uh, Bing API you can use it by yourself uh, in this speech, we only cover two technology that we would like to integrate with the mobile applications. The first one, the Vision API. Uh, so Vision API, uh, like uh, the, the name suggests, we can use the API to get some information from an image. Okay. Um, there are um, many uh, results that come from the API. The first one is categories. So uh, Microsoft has developed some kind of taxonomy of all images in this world it only fall to 114 categories okay so uh, for example uh, this is a picture uh, a cow they can detect whether it's an animal okay there are a big category called animals and then from uh, animals category there are cow and other animals um, and then they they also provide the automatic de description about an image. So after uh, the you get the category of image, you got the description of image. You can also get the metadata from the image. You can also get um, a boolean that uh, show whether this is racist or not, and whether this is content adult content or not, and um yeah uh something like that okay so if you would like to use the vision api in your applications the first thing that you have to do is uh, spin off a computer vision api from your azure subscription okay uh so yeah you need azure of course uh that's how microsoft sell their product um after that, uh, uh, Microsoft has Cognitive Client SDK in Xamarin, so you can use it uh, directly in your applications. Uh, the name, the nugget is the Project Oxford Visions. Yeah, they don't even care to change the actual names. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> the Computer Vision API actually called from the beta project called Project Oxford, and they don't uh, even change the name. So uh, you, we, we, use, we will use this uh, Project Oxford SDK clients in our applications. And then you actually call the API. Yeah. Uh, there are some uh, uh, function that can you use. Uh, for example, we, we can use analyze image, then we can, uh, and, uh, we can get all of the information about all of the image, or we can uh, describe the image, something like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, time to demo. Um, <coughs> okay.
Oke. Okay. Uh-huh. Ya. Yeah. So, um, I have an application called XCommerce. Ya. Yeah. Uh, in this applications, we try to sell uh, foods because uh, we would like to uh, find uh, success also in the food space area like Jin Yang. Um, in these applications, we can uh, see a catalog of menu. Yeah. And then uh, we also have uh, functions uh, for the sellers. They can upload uh, uh, their product. Okay, so we we would like to add a, fun, a function where the application can detect whether the the users is upload a food image or not. Okay, something like that. Okay, um, we need to uh, set up the uh, Vision API first. Okay, so I open up my uh, Azure account. As you can see, you can search here uh, new and fusion. Okay, or you can find it in the AI and cognitive services category. There are a lot of uh, functionality that you can use. And for this uh, demo, I will use the computer vision API okay you you need to uh, create the 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 services I've already have that one in here okay so uh, I have a cognitive services the computer vision API the you need uh, access to this key access in your mobile apps. So you will need two uh, information in your mobile applications. The first one is the endpoint, okay? And the second one, the uh, access key. Yeah, you can get uh, the key from here. You can use the only the uh, first key, okay? So we have set up the back end here. And then in the mobile apps, I've already have uh, summary forms applications. So uh, this is the uh, form summary, not the uh, uh, native Android or iOS summary. Uh, we can add the Vision uh, client SDK from the Nougat. Oh, okay, in the Android one. Okay. This is the. There are two library that we need to integrate in our application. The first one is Microsoft Project Oxford Comment, and the second one is uh, Microsoft Project Oxford Vision. Okay. If you are not see it in the Nugget, you can just search uh, Oxford or Vision. I think Vision. API. Okay. Okay. Yes, Oxford then. Yeah. Okay. Once you installed, um, you can use in your applications. Uh, I will access the application from the summary uh, form page. Okay. I've already. Um, provide my vision key and vision URLs here. Okay, this is the information that you got from the uh, Azure. And the actual applications in the upload page, I have an instance of vision service client. Yeah, so you need to declare a vision service client with your own vision key and with your own vision URLs. Okay. And then you can start uh, 
taking a picture or you can get the picture from uh, your gallery and you upload the actual pictures to the uh, cognitive services and then the cognitive services will return uh, some kind of uh, information from the image. Um, for, for this demo, I use uh, additional plugin yeah, uh, to make it easy to work with an uh, image called plugin, uh, plugin permission and plugin media. Okay? Otherwise, you, you have to build a dependency service both in the uh, summer and Android and summer and iOS. Okay, so after declaring the client, and this is the actual uh, call to the uh, cognitive services, we provide <coughs> the stream of the images, okay, and the visual features that would you like to have from the API. So you can uh, determine what kind of operation that Azure Cognitive Services does in the back end. Because uh, the more operation, it will take a longer time. So if you just need the categories of the pictures or the description of the features, just create uh, the feature that you would like to have. Okay, I don't need the face. I don't need the text. I think I need it. Uh, I don't need the colors. Okay. And then you've got the analysis results, and from these classes, you can access many kind of information. Whether it's adult content, why, which is category, the color, the image type. Okay. Let's see in an action. Uh, I will play the applications. Start debugging. Okay. With the photo results. Okay, because I've uh, I'm using uh, an emulator. Uh, the applications cannot actually uh, uh, the emulator can actually take the pictures. So I I supply the pictures uh, with the image URL. Okay. But the demo itself will work if you change it to the actual files. Okay, I have a declared photos from here. I think this one. Uh, oh no. So I have a photos for, uh, for a car. Okay, so we will test the applications whether it can detect the applications, uh, the, the, the users that upload image, uh, food image or not. Okay. Um, they will check the image. We get the results and from the results, we can get all of information about the image. Uh, it falls down to Car, yeah. The category of the image is trans car. Trans means transportation. Car is the type of the information, uh, the type of the transportation uh, vehicle. You get also uh, colors, yeah. Dominant colors, white. The accent colors is, I think, it's uh, red. You also get descriptions. You get automatic captions. A close up of a car. Or you can you uh, you can um, combine the tag to re uh, to build your own descriptions. Yeah, this is a red car or uh, um, a, uh, a car that have mirror or something like that. Uh, I don't bring the faces, so it can't be evaluated. You have also the metadata and everything else. Okay, to check whether the image is fall into the food category. Uh, I have a function here to check whether the text, yeah, so we can use the the text of the image 
it contains a lot of tags yeah there are three car red and uh, mirror so it doesn't uh, have a uh, food information so we can determine that the users now upload the image okay and then let's try with the actual food image um, wait 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 okay this one I changed the image to pizza image Okay, we log in, we upload the pizza image. Yeah, that's pizza. The Hawaiian pizza that you have already ate outside. Uh, okay, where is the food? Let's try it again because I, I, uh, I don't use the breakpoint. Let's see how uh, Azure Cognitive Services describe uh, an image. Okay, we have the result here. We have a categories, food underscore pizza. So you have the categories, the food, and you have uh, the, the actual description of the image, pizzas. You can get also in the description you have one caption, a pizza sitting on a pan, and you got the text. Uh, from this text, you can detect whether it's actually content of food or not. Yeah. So I just iterate uh, this uh, information, and if I found a food, then it's actually a food. Okay. So it's uh, um, described a uh, food, and because I would like to sold also my company to Periscope. I can uh, give you s uh, one demo about how the uh, cognitive services detect uh, content that have uh, some adult information. I change the photos. Uh, and for these functions, I check whether it contain adult or not. Yeah, that's okay. I've already blurred the image <laughs> because I know there will be a video. Wait, but sensor is visible. Okay, you can. So with this kind of API, uh, I'm thinking to build a mobile applications for my own child. So if he or she uh, watch or uh, download photos or video, I can know that he <laughs> do something unprohibited. Okay, so um, we add the photo here and we've got the result. Uh, it takes a longer time. See the results the adult one, the adult score, uh, the Microsoft pretty confident that the image is <laughs> uh, adult content. And it so you need to provide some kind of threshold. threshold yeah? If the number is too low, maybe you can, um, uh, you can provide manual confirmations whether the image comes with the uh, pornographic contents. But because this is like almost 99%, you can just uh, display layer I pick it first. Okay, your product content, pornographic content, you can upload it. Okay, so uh, it works. Yeah, um, that's how you use the Azure Cognitive Services in your mobile applications. Uh, basically, you only need the API, uh, the, the URL, and the API key, then you are all set up. Okay. Now, the second one, uh, the language API, 
um, like you know, currently many people say the chatbot is taking uh, it the word. You don't have to build your own mobile apps. You just has uh, you only need to build chatbot. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. For developers, it's not that important, right? The important thing that whether we can build applications or whether we can build chatbot easily. Okay, so uh, the chatbot itself, I prefer uh, these definitions because a chatbot sometimes use artificial intelligence, sometimes it's not. Yeah, sometimes a chatbot is only a set of rules that uh, navigate users if a user type some uh, a comment or not. Okay, pre divine uh, uh, comment or not. And uh, the chatbot use case is pretty much uh, a lot. And most of it, uh, I use my slides uh, in my presentation to a, a banking customer, so I highlight the uh, blue ones. But the other ones, uh, I think chatbot is pretty um, useful for customer services. Okay? like a bank a banking company have like 40 or 50 people only to answer a simple questions uh, how i can check my balance accounts or something like that and they pay a lot of money to the customer service company because uh, in some cases a bank doesn't have their own customer center they outsource the customer centers to other company okay and they pe uh, they pay per agent uh, so if if they can build a chatbot in their mobile applications or in their web applications um, to answer these typical questions, yeah, because some people just lazy enough not want to read the FAQ and not want to read the navigate to the menu of the applications, we can use the uh, the, the chatbot, okay? And uh, there are two types two types of chatbot, I think the first one is rule based, the manual, the, the first one is the manual rule based, so we define the command after the, the users type this thing, they will navigate to this menu or something like that, and the second one is AI based, where the rule itself is automatically generated uh, by the uh, algorithm, okay, so we don't have to define uh, it manually. Uh, this is. Uh, the sample application from Indonesia, uh, BCA is like a biggest bank uh, in Indonesia. They use bot to answer questions from the customers. And actually it's pretty useful, but it's not that kind of smart bot because it's just uh, use the rule-based bot. Rule bot. And if you know, if you want to build a bot uh, in your mobile applications, the same thing uh, apply when you would like to build uh, hot dog recognizers, okay? The first one, you, you have to receive uh, natural language input from the customers. So send me money, transfer money, give me money. It should be belongs to one actions, right? Transfers, okay? Uh, and you can't, you can't, um, you, you can't imagine what, how, what, how people use your, your, your application, how they talk, okay? So they, uh, you need the natural language processors. And uh, this, the second one, you, you have to determine the intent. Uh, does people want to transfer? Does people want to, I don't know, pay something? Something like that. And after that, you have to uh, actually uh, call a method from your applications. If people want to transfer, then you will call these functions. If you, people want to um, uh, pay something, then you kill, you call these functions, okay? And the and the last the last stage is you present the response. For uh, the two box uh, on the right, uh, you can use the language understanding intelligence services from Microsoft. So you don't have to build your own natural language engine. Yeah, you just train the engine by your predefined uh, text, and the engine will learn. Uh, how to parse the input from the customers, and for the uh, the the last two boxes, you can build your own bot uh, applications that connect with several uh, channels, or you can use the bot framework from Microsoft to build one and talk everywhere. Okay, not build one and deploy everywhere, 
build one and talk everywhere. The language under, understanding intelligence services, this is uh, the example of the, uh, the uh, Lewis program. So you can train, uh, you can supply uh, the Lewis with uh, sentences and then you can highlight, uh, for example, you can highlight uh, an iPhone with uh, this kind of grammar and you decide uh, if you found uh, this kind of uh, sentence again then this this uh, these words belongs to entity called application type okay or maybe you can uh, supply the lewis with uh, i want to transfer and then you can highlight the transfers this is the actions okay and then you supply with uh, several uh, sentences and you can train the lewis to build uh, an lp api that you can access from your applications okay this is the first steps building the uh, the parser and uh, to determine the input and the second one to build the channel so uh, azure uh, sorry microsoft has uh, developed a uh, bot framework uh, actually bot framework is consists of um, two main parts yeah, the first one is the the bot connector uh, bot connector means we can develop our uh, uh, bot web service once and you can connect with several kind of services out there okay um, uh, telegram slack skype uh, facebook okay and for the other services like in indonesia line is very popular uh, so we need to build our own connector from the uh, our own apps but if you build an enterprise bot yeah you can use like Skype or Slack uh, uh, connector in your applications. Okay, this is the bot connectors, and the second one is the bot builder SDKs. So Microsoft has provided you with the builder uh, SDKs. Uh, they provide with two uh, major language. They support C sharp and they support uh, Node.js. Yeah, and of course. Um, what we do is actually in this uh, in this block, okay, you build your uh, code, uh, how you rewrote uh, the users to some specific commands, and then you can use the cognitive services as your uh, AI engines. Maybe you would like get a receipt from uh, your employee to upload uh, their expense, and then you upload the images to the uh, computer visions they can recognize the text yeah you've got the you've got the text and then you process it in your applications and to start creating a bot uh, we will add some uh, bot in our applications uh, we can order a pizza or sandwich by using a, a text messaging the first one to build a bot you have to uh, create a bot entry in the bot frameworks and currently it's on a preview mode uh, so whatever in preview mode is still free i don't know if after it's ga what uh, what's uh, the pricing about the services okay so you you create a, a bot uh, for example i use a monkey sandwich so the uh, the, the bot will uh, process uh, your sandwich ordering after you building a bot then you need to create uh, a Microsoft application ID and password to create an authentica authentication. And you will use the key in your app services. So your bot is actually a web application, right? Your bot is actually just a similar MVC uh, or web API applications that you can deploy on your VM or your uh, application services. In this demo, I will use the Azure App Services and we can define the application ID and application password that you generate in these steps to these application services. So after you publish your web to uh, the app services, app services can talk to the uh, bot connector services to, uh, to relay the messages with channel that you have configured. Okay. And then to use the bot in your applications, again, Microsoft has provided with, it, with the SDKs. You can use the bot connector uh, direct line. 
uh, and use it your own applications. Uh, currently, there is limitation for the uh, SDKs. You can't use the portable class library uh, type of projects. Okay, so you use you have to use the Xamarin uh, shared applications. Okay, let's see the demos again. So um, here I have a. The first thing to do is you build the bot in the botframework.com. Okay. Sign it first, and then. Okay, I have uh, my bot called Monkey Sandwich, and I've created a channel. Okay, so they have. Uh, direct line channels, Skype channels. If, if you like to add a channel from Facebook, you just uh, add this Facebook. So of course, you have to create a Facebook page first, and you've got an ID, and the ID you supply the ID in here, so the bot services can talk to the Facebook pages. Okay, and then. Uh, when you develop a bot, you can test the bot from here. They provided uh, the web interface. So you don't need to actually integrate it directly from your mobile application first. Okay, this is the bot. Uh, and then if you want to access your bot services from your mobile application, so you need to add a channel called direct line. Direct line means it will expose your bot services as a REST API. Okay, so you if you don't use the SDK, you can use uh, the direct line as the endpoint. Okay, uh, and after this, uh, I have uh, the Microsoft ID, app ID, and password, and and then I build an app service called Sandwich. Okay. This is the actual bot. If you don't use the, the bot framework, uh, if you want to build your own uh, bot application, this is the actual code you will uh, write. Okay, So this is the uh, usual MVC applications. If you are interested in building bots, uh, Microsoft has provided a good samples. <coughs> I will show you uh, some kind of uh, application that can you uh, learn from. Okay, so they've built uh, many samples. Uh, bot, this one, the samples. Bot that use with uh, Echo. This is use the Louis. This is use the simple forms and etc. So you can learn from the uh, source code. And uh, I've deployed the sandwich, simple sandwich bot in uh, my Azure App Services. What he do, what it does is actually um, building uh, ordering pr order processing for our for our applications. Okay, so it's divine what kind of sandwich, what length, what bread options. But toppings, and for this demo, I don't use the Louis. Okay, I use a features in um, in a bot builders called form builder. Okay, in form builder, we don't use to define the, uh, the uh, we don't have to determine the intent of the users. We only need to guide them step by step. Okay, and to build the steps, it's not that uh, complicated. We only need to define uh, in the order, uh, with the order, uh, with the order uh, steps. Yeah, the first one you would you would like to ask people uh, uh, with sandwich, uh, in uh, what length, type bread, type cheese, uh, and uh, the toppings and the sauce. Okay, and after you you have this kind of attributes, you just call this form builder. Okay, if you want to 
try the more complicated demo, you can use the order pizza because this uh, uh, the the sample pizza uh, the pizza bot use the Louis that I described before. Okay, so you have to uh, tra train uh, the Louis to determine whether uh, people uh, what kind of pizza uh, which pizza they would like to uh, access uh, they would like to to buy. Okay. So uh, after you build the applications, you only to need to publish the applications to the Azure, and then in the mobile apps, okay, we installed the Nougat, yeah, the library, the SDK that we can use in our applications called Microsoft Bot Connector the direct line. Yeah. And then you uh, build the interface. I have uh, this uh, chat application, uh, the chat page. Okay. Um, the actual code is belong here. Yeah. To work with bot, bot framework, you need to these uh, three uh, classes from the direct line, the direct line library. Yeah, the first one is the direct line client. It's similar to the Fusion Surface client or the, em the Emotion Surface clients. It's uh, abstract the uh, the actual API calls, so you only need the direct line key. Yeah, you've got the key from the Bot framework uh, settings. Okay, so you use this key. Where is the key? This is the app ID. Okay, so you've got the key in the uh, when you create a new bot. And then uh, you need to declare the bot name. Uh, bot name is uh, the if you use um, uh, .NET, the bot builder, it will uh, this, uh, it will take the project name or names that describe in the web config. If you use the not SDK, uh, not JS SDK, you can declare the bot name in the application JSON config files. Okay, so this is the bot name, and what uh, what the bot connection did is uh, after we got the direct line client, we start the conversation. Okay, when we declare the conversation start conversations, then the application will listen to the channel to the, di the direct line channel whether there is a ongoing message or uh, in uh, out outbox message or outgoing ingoing or outgoing message, and. Um, the applications, the bot is have uh, abstraction classes called activity. So everything is going on between the server and the client. It's called the activity. Uh, it's different from the uh, Android activity. Uh, the activity consists of uh, several uh, attributes, who talks, and what kind of type the message. And then we can. Uh, receive the message here, yeah, from uh, get message functions, and we can determine if uh, if the activity is consists of some words. We can directly uh, reroute to the uh, actual function that would like to process uh, uh, the comment from the users. Okay, so in these uh, samples. Uh, everything that user type in the applications will directly goes to the servers, and servers will uh, respond to the corresponding uh, uh, corresponding uh, command. Okay, um, let's try it in the, the actual applications. <coughs> okay, uh, now we have the chat interface. Yeah, uh, we can start with hi. Uh, okay, see the bot uh, will start responding with the welcome message that you describe here. Okay, and then for the steps, it's automatically built from 
the attribute you describe here use the uh, using the form builder okay you can okay what kind of sandwich do you want to eat uh, 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 I like fish so I uh, I prefer tuna oh no 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 wait okay uh, after uh, the bot asked for the type of sandwich they asked for the length options yeah we can just uh, answer the questions I buy a sandwich for all of you guys so we need the six inch and bread okay so the the form builder the form builder is actually uh, quite smart enough if you just if he confused uh, whether it's uh, the first one or the second one they will ask again okay uh, by nine bread did you mean this one or this one okay so uh, even though we don't use the Lewis engine the board is not really dumb okay grain honey and you don't always have to uh, create the complete uh, message okay the American America is not a cheese option okay there you go smartboard I project one of more topping you can use numbers uh, six and seven okay sauce uh, nine okay is this your selection and the end of the interactions the bot will ask you whether to confirm if this data is already matched with your uh, uh, request as you see uh, uh, we can easily build, build uh, a bot uh, services in our summary and applications but if we if you see the scenario it's actually more cumbersome from the mobile apps right in the mobile app we can just tap uh, the menu or something like that so uh, when you're building a bot, it's not only about uh, changing the interaction from menu base or the UI base to the text base, but it has to be cutting down some steps. Okay, if you'd like to uh, buy a pizza with several questions like this, it's better if you use just uh, UI interface. Okay, but if you uh, if you if you if you are sure that with text you can cut some some steps from your uh, current uh, workflow then you you can uh, build uh, the bot interview applications okay so uh, bot is good but not in uh, every case that's the second demos uh, from these sessions uh, I've already upload the samples in my github you can um, uh, check it there uh, for the build uh, for the bot source code it or uh, it has uh, Microsoft has it in our github you can search Microsoft bot builders and uh, if you have any questions about uh, Xamarin uh, mobile developments Azure cognitive service development or mobile development as in general uh, you can contact me at uh, my emails and my phones or you just want to go to Indonesia and you would like to uh, help uh, developer events uh, you can just contact me or maybe we can catch up okay um, maybe that's all about uh, the sessions um, maybe I would like to have I st st still have like five or ten minutes maybe three questions and maximum some of you will discuss something yeah Context of your AI machine learning capability by Microsoft. Do they have provisioning of detecting defect in the system and correction, auto correction capability? So, so too often, mm -hmm. too often machine learning large defects, inaccuracies. Yeah. How do you detect the inaccuracies? Then, from detecting the inaccuracies, you also automate correction. Okay. So, you know, that, 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 exactly. Remediation. Yeah. Do you have that provisioning inside? So, uh, in every uh, Microsoft Azure Cognitive Service API, uh, it always shows the confidence score. 
okay so uh, you don't need to uh, uh, just display what uh, API return to you so if you have certain uh, processing in your applications you can get this course so if you want like uh, if you don't satisfy maybe you you can you can set as high as high nine or uh, 99 percent if it not uh, serve this kind of numbers you you can uh, for the custom vision API you can uh, uh, train the, the the engine back and then get the model back so uh, for your question I think the 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 solution is you define your own threshold because uh, Microsoft always uh, return the data with their own confidence score see uh, so uh, if you don't satisfy with uh, that kind of numbers uh, you you still can up uh, you can still train the model by uh, with your own image or you, you tweak it again or you just can build your AI uh, AI based uh, uh, your custom vision API with the Azure machine learning services is different kind of uh, services from the cognitive because in cognitive you just consume the API but if you want to build by yourself uh, they also provide Azure machine learning Azure ML yeah uh, there are like 400 algorithm that you can use uh, maybe you can pick one or two algorithm that match your uh, current problems we noticed that it doesn't blend with the BI capability. So, so the, the detection is, is very remote. Yeah. And the correction even worse. Okay. See, for example, when you send to your siblings, okay, let's say the message. They okay. will notice that if you send like that, just even five people, they say that is bad. I see. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so in other words, the, the BI capability is unable to detect whether you are sending that is spamming. Because if it's in your internal family, let's say mm -hmm. five, they consider spamming, then, <coughs> then the, def the defect. The defect you cannot correct because they're master, uh, you know, uh, uh, framework. I see, right? I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. For that kind of problem, yeah. Then we need to apologize one by one. <laughs> okay. Is there any questions? Can we integrate uh, Azure ML services? Uh, uh, okay, sorry. Oh, sorry. Can we integrate Azure ML services with Chartboard? Of course. Oh, yeah, because the Azure ML services is produced uh, URL, okay, so you can build your own bot and uh, consume the API URL that you uh, that Azure ML produced. It could be. Yeah. Uh, second one, yeah, please. Regarding the demo you showed us just now, so you are doing for, so you are collecting information from one API to another. Mm -hmm. So my question is, do it, Louis. It seems to me this is like a composite information yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do it in Louis, what's the challenge would it be? How many levels can you go with it in Louis? Um, okay. Uh, actually, uh, in this demo, I don't use the uh, Louis capability. So when building the questions, we uh, use the form builders. Uh, in your specific questions, if you need um, the, the Lewis itself is not used to build the the uh, the depth of levels. Okay, the Lewis uh, we train the Lewis to determine the 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 text that we get from the customers. Okay, yeah, is this ask for person? Is this asking for money? Is this asking for something? In uh, if you would like to build uh, the depth level, we as a programmer define it. Okay, so Lewis is only used to. Uh, parsing the input and then we got the entity or we get the how customer will do this application for something like that and other than you have to build by yourself okay yeah okay the last one i think this is the last one question uh sorry uh, the back one yeah yeah okay uh, then you go natural language so i have my action and that's uh, using api ai and if i want to migrate them to microsoft do I have to start from scratch, or is there an uh, easy way to just import it to okay. uh, Microsoft? Uh, I see. Currently, there are no an easy way to tr uh, export your action intent from with the AI to uh, uh, Louis. So you need to train it by yourself from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Last questions. Yeah. Yes, question. uh, just wondering, do you also have support for uh, Swift and Java testing for all for the packages that you have shown us here?
Okay, uh, the Android has the SDK. Uh, I'm not sure whether the Swift uh, has the SDK from Microsoft. Yeah, uh, the Android has it. Okay, okay. Okay, uh, that's all, folks. Thank you for uh, coming to uh, uh, my sessions. Uh, there are still a lot of great talks uh, in other rooms. You can just wander around and see the schedules.